Hello and welcome. And just an announcement. Uh, ourselves, the Beef Eaters, which is George at Diecast Salvage, Martin at Martin Durs Dinky Restorations, Paul at Midlife Models, Juan at Matchbox Resurrection, and myself, Paul, at Pimp My Diecasts, have joined together with the guys over the pond, the three blind mice, who are Paul at Fat Guy Productions, Lee Time Rider at Wee Little Cars, George at Hodges Hot Wheels and Diecast, and we're going to be doing monthly, but split between the two groups, builds, so one month the beef eaters will do it and the next month the three blind mice will be hosting it's invitational so I'll see you there thank you and today's build is going to be the dinky 25h streamlined fire engine I'm doing two of them as I got two and one's going to be for a friend's grandson, a young chap called Ollie. And stick around and watch the video because they do turn out quite gorgeous. A really nice resto on the pair of them. And the actual model is just paused one. The stamped base on it, I donate the, it's post 45, so, and it's pre 50, so it could be any year between 45 and 50 to date it. Anyway, as you can see, it's the Streamline Fire Engine 25H, and it first retailed at 9D. Which I'm not working it out, but it's weird money. I bought the rear vehicle, belonged to Lancaster Fire Brigade, and can be seen here in the photo. And look, quite, if you look at it compared to today's vehicle, there's not a lot of storage for hose cutting equipment. Today's fire engines are. A totally different thing I'm presuming. There'd be no water tank so we'd draw and use a pump. But anyway, here's the best one of the bit well this is the better one of the two, to be honest. Quite rough and play one. No tires, no ladder, no bell. And a very worn example really both of them but the basics are there to make a start of. so they both turn out really gorgeous as it goes so anyway there we go the first thing there's no drilling a base off with this one because they were actually the base is held on by the axle and in turn the wheels were crimped on and yeah I'm just unclipping the base out it's been battered over the years and dented and bent so that'll get straightened out in due course and there we go, it's off to the side and you can see it's just a very basic casting inside there no finery, no interior or anything the base plate's made of very thin tin so it's probably due to post-war austerity trying to save materials and the wheels are the hubbed variety Anyway, because there's two here, I'm unclipping what's left of the ladder and throw it in scrap. And there we go. 
for a change we've got a caustic bathodome times two and there we are caustic bathodome and some had an artist on this as the caustic goes in you'll notice one goes brown and one goes red so I said I'd say they changed the formulation of pigment of pen of the paint so depending on I think it was much later but what year the laws came in on lead on toys I presume one may be a leaded paint and one may not Unsure, I'd have to check which year the lead laws came on the toys but I'm guessing it was just post war and here I'm just buffing up the castings going over them with a wire wall getting the oxidisation from the caustic and where it's been burnt with no paint over the years just clean them up a bit same with both give it a quick scrub over with the wire wheel and it brings the writing out that little bit more and once all the rats away from around it and here I'm just spinning the wheels on the axles with the wire brush give them a quick clean and here I'm tin bashing the bases straighten them out a bit make them so they fit nice and snug again and straight after I'm presuming they've had 70 years of play work or rather probably it's probably intermittently 30 years of play work and god knows how long how long in boxes just getting the axle bits in here I'm using gum blue now it's cleaned off just blew it with a gum blue it gives a more traditional finish than spraying them with paint afterwards you have to buff it up to get rid of the residue it leaves on top and just for a bit of extra protection I've lacquered them later on just to give them a little bit of extra protection but they look nice with a gun blue and when it's polished well buffed rather than polished I didn't use any polishing materials and here's the second base receiving the gun blue you buy this stuff in a kit you can have the cleaner the degreaser I, as it was because I put it through caustic you're not going to need much cleaning or degreasing after that so I just went straight on with a gun blue and there we are last little bit going on wiping round the rear differential area and it's starting to look good makes a vast difference compared to paint because some did use this gun blue rather than paint it was probably a cheaper solution they probably just had a bath of it and threw them all in and just let them blow off rather than hanging them up to paint and stuff they like I say just it's easier just throw them in a bath they're not gonna run and here I'm spraying on some primer ready for the colour coat to go on which is going on next nice fire engine red to stand out 
which makes it in reality a very, it is a very pretty model actually when it's finished. Well, times two. It's very, oh what is it, Art Deco I'd say. To be real, the design. It's a very Art Deco design. I'm getting closer I think I'm not so sure whether that was still put in the red or not the lack lacquer stage oh no it was still red there I've not lacquered it because I've still to do the silver because I lacquered the red and silver together that was a Mr. B uh, Mr. Ben moment and if by and as if by magic a man appeared and as if by magic, the grill were painted. Same with a pump at the rear. I'm guessing there's no water tanks on board this one. By the pump at the rear, I'm guessing they drew water from a standpipe. At the side of road, wherever they were. Because Fire Brigade, they have the job of going round and making sure, still to this day, making sure standpipes are serviceable, easily accessible and maintenance and checking condition. It's one of the jobs. Keeps them out of station and doing something, I suppose. I was going to say keeps them off street corners, but that's not exactly right. Exactly right, is it? Oh yeah, the detail paintings coming on here and... Once that were done, I lacquered over it to seal it in. And there we are, once it's lacquered nice and shiny. And it's ready for the ladder popping up. I got the ladders and the bells from model supplies and they're a really good part to be honest. You could have it either way on this, you could either paint the ladder red or have it silver and buff it up. I just left it the silver anodized sort of finish like aluminium ladders. In reality on the real vehicle they were probably I'd say wooden ladders on the real vehicles. At that uh, the model was actually actually released in 1937. So I'd almost definitely say they were wooden ladders. I'd say aluminium came in much later, but... It's all good. And there you can see inside. The tabs I have to knock over. And here we're knocking over with a hammer inside and it's just occurred to me now as it does on many jobs when you've done a job I've just thought why on earth didn't I just twist the tabs with pliers rather than knocking them over you just do stuff like that and think don't Homer Simpson moment but anyway, they're attached. It's done. The job is done, no point in worrying. And then what I'm doing here is crimping the axle lens together. And here I'm working out the length of wire to give the bell that hangs off the ladder. And there we go pretty much finished and here's what we started off with a rather battered and player one 
post war. Dinky 25 H. Fire engine streamlined for the use of. Looking in a rather battered and sorry for its health condition. And here's where we ended up. rather glorious looking fire engine well times two because I've done two of them looks as if it's just been taken out of the box when you received it as a child or when the child received it whoever got it does make you wonder sometimes who had them as kids Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please do. By hitting the subscribe button. And even better, if you hit the bell, the bell icon to receive notifications. And lastly, I've put a couple of photographic shots on. And just to mention to me, people who have subscribed already, thank you for watching and thank you for your support. It is much appreciated and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.